Hello there, my name is Brent. And in just a minute, I'm gonna take this cage from 1865, 700 feet down into an abandoned silver mine. Why? Why would I risk my life going 700 feet down in an old silver mine? Well, that's what this video is all about. Oh, sh Inside that building is the Union Mine. And the Union Mine, once upon a time, was the largest mine in California's history. Something like $500 million worth of silver was pulled out of that hole that I was just standing by. But today, I'm headed in there in search of water and treasures. You see, I live in an abandoned ghost town, Cerro Gordo, that's just below that hill. And the only source of water is 700 feet down in that mine. There, water seeps from the mountain into a sump, and from that sump, it needs to get pumped up 700 feet, up to here, and then down into town. Unfortunately, the pump keeps going out, so today's adventure is to try to get water back and see if anything else is in there. And this is the building that houses the Union Mine here, and the Union Mine houses the only water source for this whole town. And water has been a problem with this town since it was founded. You know, even when this place had 4,000 residents, there's never a reliable source of water. You know, there was two springs in the history of Cerro Gordo, and both of them dried up within two years. So for the majority of the time, they would bring up water with mules. We're talking tens of thousands of gallons worth of water, both to support the 4,000 residents, but also to support the mining. You know, mining is a very water intensive process. So you need tons of it up here. So they were just all day long coming and going down and up our road, bringing water. And for me, I've owned Cerro Gordo for almost three years now. And at first water was just a dream, you know, it was an illusion of the desert. And I had heard rumors of, you know, water down the Union Mine, just over there, 700 feet down, but nobody had ever seen it with their own eyes. And I was told that it was way too dangerous to go down and get it. But then about nine months ago, I met guys that were convinced that we could do it. You know, they were convinced that we could go back down there replace the original pump, run 700 feet of new piping, and Cerro Gordo would have water once again. And that's what happened. Six months ago, we did all those steps, and there was water flowing down in town once again. But it lasted about a week, and then it stopped. And at that time, it was winter. You know, I thought there was a lot of rumors of why it had stopped. Uh, there was cold air rushing through the pipe. There was a burnt out pump. There's electrical problems, there's all these things. So I decided, you know what? I can make it through the winter without running water. Let's punt on it till it's warmer. Well, now it's warmer and there's a bigger task at play that requires a lot of water. You know, I hope to start construction on a new hotel here, the new American hotel, which is gonna require a lot of concrete. And because of our road, we are going to make the concrete here on site. And making concrete requires a lot of water. So, now, it's not just about washing dishes and cleaning up. It's about building the hotel. And when we're talking about building the hotel, we're talking serious now. So I have a strong, strong desire to get back down in the 700 foot level of this mine, get this pump going again, and bring water back up. So that's the task today. The task is, we're gonna take this pump down, and if the pump needs replacing, we'll replace the pump. We'll do whatever we need to do to bring water 700 feet back up that old mine shaft to right there to back into town so I can have water for the American Hotel. I have three 2,500 gallon tanks down there. I hope to store water in all of them, which give me 7,500 gallons of the water to work with. It's gonna be a big task. You know, this task requires taking an original hoist from 1865, using a 150 year old piece of equipment to risk your life dangling over a hole going down 700 feet. But when we're down there, I hope it leads to new water. And also, I hope I get to explore a little bit. You know, the 700 level here at Cerro Gordo is a level I've always wanted to explore. I look at the maps of the place and it looks huge. It looks like there's so much to explore, so many treasures to find. And anytime I've gone down there before, it's all business. You know, we're there to replace a pump. We're there to get in and get out. Today, I hope to convince the guys to let me, you know, look around a little bit more and maybe find some different treasures. That's my hope anyways. That's what I'm getting into today. No matter what, it's gonna to be an adventure. 
So stay tuned as I try to get water back here to Cerro Gordo. The plan was I'd go down with two other guys. We diagnose what's going on with the pump, hopefully be able to just flip a switch and start it over again and then come back up. So we headed down, you know, with high hopes. The pump had been turned off for a while. We thought maybe if we turn it on, you know, it'll just get going again. And maybe it was the cold that was creating the problems. So this week when replacing the pump, my biggest concern was the hoist. You know, this is an original piece of machinery from 1865 where you're dangling in a metal cage by a cable with a 900 foot drop below you. Hoists have failed in the past and unlike a brand new rope, I don't have 100% confidence in the hoist structural integrity. But once the hoist is going down, the hoist is going down. You know, worrying about the cable snapping isn't gonna make it any more or less likely to happen. So it's not even worth thinking about it. There it Shoot, is. We went too far, we're on the moon, there's the flag. <laughs> we got pressure. I think water's getting to it. Yeah, we got 300 feet of snow almost. And as we got down there, we quickly learned that the pump we had down there, which was essentially new six months ago, was kaput. You know, it wasn't working anymore. It needed to be replaced. And luckily we had another pump up on the surface. So that this pump needed to come out and go back up. Let's go see what the sump's looking like, you know, where the actual water source is down here. There's your water. There's the ducks of Cerro Gordo. 700 feet down, this is what we're looking at. And it doesn't make a ton of sense why it's not getting back up to the top. But again, you know, I'm not the expert here, so I'll ask Craig. So Craig, who was with me, who's an electrician, he took out the pump. What was going on with it? It wasn't strong enough or something? Yeah, we were getting zero pressure on the gauge. So, filled it with oil, didn't help. It's not even sucking water. That's all that was in the pipe going up. That wasn't. Oh, all, all the way up to the top. To wherever it is. Yeah. And we were going to go back up. And each trip down to the 700 foot level takes about 45 minutes each way. So you're thinking an hour and a half round trip. And so as they're going up, I thought to myself, you know, how many of us does it take just to bring a pump back up and bring a different pump down? So I convinced the guys to leave me there. All right. Yeah. See y'all in a bit. Okay. Is it going down? Yeah. Yeah. If you guys make it, yeah. You know, I give a little peek down. And so they left with the promise to return. You know, you never know. And I started exploring. Well, there's only about four ways to go. So let's take path number one. Oh, we got some uh, crisp blue something. I mean, you're telling me that's not blue? Blue fabric. Oh, what we got? Oh, it was pants. I mean, that's a, a pant leg of it. You know, to me, people ask sometimes, you know, what would you do if you were to find Levi's? And the point's never to sell them. I just think that the fact that they sell for $100,000 is interesting. It puts in perspective how rare they are, you know, the, the rarity of these items. But for me, it's more about, it just became a quest, you know, it just became something I'm searching for, something to give me a little bit of excitement as I go back into these mines. And if I find them, my goal is to put them in the museum so I can continue telling people about the history of, you know, denim and blue jeans and mining. And so more people can learn about it. I mean, if I do find an intact pair, I'm probably gonna have to beef up my security at uh, the old museum, but that's my plan for them. You know, it's just become like, not an obsession, that's too strong of a word, but uh, 
strong passion is under. Ooh, look at that. Listerine. It's an old Listerine bottle. This is definitely the dump. This is definitely where they just threw stuff they didn't want. But yeah, I think already, you know, I mean, a lot of people watching this probably didn't know that the blue jean was invented for California silver miners. And Levi Strauss created that first blue jean. You know, they didn't invent denim, but they invented the blue jean as we know it. And so that was in 1868. And so you're looking for mines that were active in 1868. This mine was peaking then. This was like as big as it got then. So if there's ever a mine where there would be, you know, Le original Levi's being worn, it would be here at Cerro Gordo. And they found them here before. There's been a few different times where they've discovered them. And that gives me hope. You know, that means it's happened before. You know, maybe it can happen again. Maybe it'll happen right now. Maybe it'll happen in the next 10 minutes. I'll be moving these rocks around and boom, full pair of jeans. But these rags look very much like you would use if you're going to the bathroom. So I think I got those gloves on. I and mean, that's a beautiful color. The more I'm over in this area, the more I'm convinced it is their trash heap. Because they got extra pipes over here. They got extra track over here. All this extra tubing. You know, the clothes that are in here already. So this is definitely their trash heap. That doesn't mean that there's going to be any type of pants or jeans in it. But given that I've already found all that clothing, I feel like this is, you know, to be honest, and there's another one. There's the buttonhole right there. To be honest, this is amongst the best leads I've ever had, I think to find some jeans. It's just, there's so much dirt and rock over here. For now, I'm gonna go over there. See it's back over that way. Oh, that's a good start, you know? Right off the bat, boom. We had clothes, blue clothes even. Oh wow, this goes a ways. There's a carbide bin. Back in the day, how the miners would have their headlamps is they had carbide. So carbide would come in big tins like this. So if you look, see how it says right there? See how it says arbide? This is a carbide tin. So miners would dip in here, fill up their headlamps, and that's how they would get light back here. And what I think is interesting is this light is 100,000 lumens. So right now, if I do this, that's the brightest that this shaft has ever been. You know, carbide would never get it that bright. Well, this looks welcoming, doesn't it? It looks like they backfilled this, just threw stuff around. wedges, track, oh boy. Looking real hairy, but about an hour and a half. What else am I gonna do with it? I've never been back here. Oh, fabric, gloves, another trash pit. This place is stocked. Oh, damn. Oh, oil bin. Oh. So you gotta remember how to get out of here. I'm gonna follow the track first. There's an ore chute right there. Oh. Straight back first. This is exciting to me. Oh man, this level is huge. Oh, there's trash there. 
Let's stay on the main track for now. Damn, there's a lot to see here. <sighs> Uh-oh. Another split. I really gotta remember which way I'm going. Oh, that's another trash heap. Oh, what's up there? What's that way? All right. Uh, in my excitement, I'm getting turned around a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is, Look at this glow stick. Down this way. So I know that's the way I came when I come back to this T. And it keeps branching off. So remember, if I don't remember, that way's the way out. Atlas powder coat. Look how cool that is. Bam. Yes. I'm taking that. Taking that. That's so doable. Damn it. Oh. I feel like I have to go up there. Right? Nothing. So the light of these. Probably the 10th trash heap so far. Another dynamite box. And this level just, I mean, I've ignored like 10 different branches and trash heaps. 30. And it just keeps going. Finally. Gotta be quick. If there's a toilet, maybe they're using jeans as their toilet paper. Which is gross, but hey. Jeans are jeans. That's interesting. It says exit, but I'm way back. I wonder where that could have been from. The amount of toilet signs is concerning. This 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 level is massive. I mean, let's go to the toilets. There's so many freaking signs that way. Dynamite box, boom! Look at that, full dynamite box. I'm actually kind of afraid to because of the, there was like 15 sides to toilet. It almost feels like they were like with me. There's a trash heap. <sighs> Dynamite instructions. Boom. More. Just look. This level is insane. Dynamite box. Giant. Taking that. This 
seven ton. So much to see on this level. Where's this toilet they're talking about? Oh! Oh yeah. This is it. The powder room. That's so cool. This level is the coolest level I've ever been into. So you see they would create a frame and then a powder room and all the dynamite would go back there. That's where you see the sawdust on the ground and wrappers. I'm not gonna go in there. One, because scary, but two, I'm running up against my hour and a half. Like, I want to go up there. Look at that. Oh, man, look at that box. That is beautiful. Holy cow. This is my favorite exploration yet. Oh, oh. it's ex... It's ex oh, my flashlight's dying. Oh, come on. Not what you want to see. Uh. This is it. What is it? All right, glow stick that way. So we got that way. I mean, this thing just goes forever. It just keeps branching. I had no idea this level was this big because I never walked back straight when I got off. I never had time to explore because I was always on a mission, you know, to diagnose the pump. Now that I understand how big this thing is, I'm gonna plan a proper trip down here. There's another exit sign. I mean, I gotta see what this exit's about. There's a dynamite box, look. Another trash heap, you see the dynamite box buried in there? There's four of them in there. This level is probably miles. Oh, look, a ladder up. Now I feel like I, ha! Ah! That's the exit? Oh, sh**. Oh, I gotta go up that. That's another day, though. I'm here by myself right now. I told them I'd be done. Look, there's a cable, though, to pull yourself up. Oops, geez. How many people have possibly ever walked up that ladder? Very few. If any. So if there's going to be jeans, we've already found denim, we've already found pants. <sighs> this is it. I mean, this level, of any level, is the most exciting one I've ever checked out. Probably been walking for a couple miles now. And I need to get back, because I told those guys 15 minutes, or hour and 30 minutes, I mean. <sighs> but I'm just rushing past. I mean, if I would just spend my time to look at the ground, there's so much stuff here. I'm backtracking now to where I left that box. All right, I got a few treasures. I have so many more treasures back here that I can carry, but I only have five minutes to get back to the guys. They're supposed to be back down with a new pump. So I'm gonna make my way back, but I'll say this. I didn't know what to expect today. You know, I didn't know the seven hour was this big. I'd only gone to the other ends of it. This just excites me because down each of these, there's so much more to see. There's probably another mile, two miles to see. So I'm coming back. But the main thing about today was the mission to replace the pump. So let's get back over there. Let's replace this pump. Let's get water back to Cerro Gordo. 
And let's leave a little bit for the next day, you know? They say that about writing sometimes. Stop when you're the hottest, that way you pick up good tomorrow. So maybe next time I come down here, I'll pick it up good. And we'll find a whole bunch of stuff. All right, looks like I beat the guys back. Got my treasures, no pump. Let's see where they are. Over there soon. Oh, but the thing is, past the pump, past the stump, there's two more full tunnels. And if those are anywhere near the, the size that I just went through, I'm gonna need a month back here, not just a day. But for now, it's time for a little bit of water, maybe a little snack, and review this treasure I got. I think the guys are getting close again. Hello? Oh, there they are. Ah, oh, well, guess I don't need to spend the night down here after all. <laughs> Look at these treasures though. Look how cool that is. All sorts of fun things to put into the museum. And that's a successful day. If you can get things for the museum, and Waterbach on at Cerro Gordo. I mean, I can't think of a better day. Hello again. Did you miss us? Terribly. <laughs> Make any friends? A few. Found some treasure too, which is always a good thing. Nice. What, what were you moving around down here? Me, me? There was loud thumps and thuds. Really? Yeah. Oh. When we were going up. That wasn't, maybe me is going on, oh, uh oh, there you go. Oh. All right, we have arrived, Johnny. Perfect. Give me a light. The guys came back, and then the real work began. You know, we put in the new pump, and what we learned pretty quickly is that it was not a self-priming pump, meaning the pump sits about 40 yards away from the actual water source. And so there's a, a water line laying between the pump and the water source. And in that 40 yards, there's a collapse. So this line goes up and over maybe a four-foot pile of rock and because of that it's very difficult to prime the pump meaning put water in that section of piping so the pump can start and the pump was not self priming meaning it's not going to suck the water out itself so we had this contraption that basically used a drill to prime a pump so it sucks water out of one end and pushes in the other but because we were having to go over that four foot hump of dirt it just wasn't priming the way it should meaning that portion of line was not getting the water needed to kind of create the suction and for the pump to work. I'm not sure how we're gonna solve this last little bit of the pump problem today. And so we were concerned, you know, it seemed like all this was in vain, but then after, you know, maybe 30 minutes of squeezing my hand around this freezing cold pipe in 40 degree water, the pump started spitting out a little bit and that was, Exciting, you know, that's the way we've gone down there for. And so now I can happily report that water is running. Uh, I can't promise how long water will run, but my hope is that I can fill enough storage tanks during this time that it is running to be able to use in the construction of the American Hotel. You know, I'm gonna need a lot of water. I have three separate 2,500 gallon tanks that I could fill up ideally. So ideally I could store 7,500 gallons of water up here, which would go a long ways in this reconstruction effort. So for now, water is back, but uh, ask me again in a week or a month and we'll see how it's going. And I think until then, I'm gonna keep exploring this map of the 700 foot level and create a little bit of a game plan to go back down there, probably with somebody else, and explore some of these areas that I wasn't able to this time. There it is. Water is back to Cerro Gordo, for the time being anyways. But I had a lot of fun. You know, if you would have told me at 15, the type of problems I would be solving would be going into an abandoned mine shaft, 700 feet down, to bring water back up, to bring it into a ghost town that I own. I might've believed you, but I probably would've thought you were crazy. But I love it. You know, these types of problems just get me firing on all cylinders. And they're types of problems that I had never experienced in my life, but I think, they bring out the best of me. 
and I just love the support I've gotten too. You know, this project wouldn't have been possible without the guys from Owens Valley who are up here because they love history, they want to see this town succeed, and that's amazing. You know, it's amazing to feel that support both locally and for you guys, you know, from this channel. It's just means the world to me that I can get on here every week and just feel supported in all of these efforts. So thank you, thank you so much. And also this week, had me thinking a lot about water. You know, even down there, 700 feet, just sitting by that little sump of water, brought me some peace. You know, I think as humans, we love being around water, no matter what size or what shape. It even appears there's some water in these clouds behind me right now, or there's definitely water, but it might be snowing tonight. But that's a good thing, you know, because we need water to live. And imagine if we were just repulsed by water about how terrible of life that would be. And I try to think about that perspective a lot, even with things like our eyes, you know? What if our eyes only showed us the dangers and the perils in this world? But they don't, you know? They show us the beauty too. They show me sunsets like this that I seemingly never get sick of. And so I try to remember that perspective a lot, especially this week, you know, try to see the good and the good that we're allowed to see. And that's what I hope for you guys this week. I hope you have interesting projects to tackle. I hope you find some time to spend it by some water. I hope that you see the good things in this world and not just the peril. And until next week, I'm signing out. I hope you guys have an amazing week. And I'll see you next time.